All right, it's been a, a few weeks, so I'm back with another recent reads and um, a decent stack of recently acquired books. So what have I read lately? Uh, another Adrian Tchaikovsky uh, novella, Made Things. I haven't heard anyone talk about this. Um, it was short and fun about kind of some sort of uh, medieval fantasy world. The world building is very... Um, in a lot of his novellas, the world building is um, pretty sparse, but um, decent enough to tell a good story. So there's some sort of fantasy feudal city um, where, uh, the, you know, the people at the top, <clears throat> um, they have magic abilities and whatnot. And a lot of commoners do too, but unless you have a decent amount of a magic ability, you're basically just a, a regular commoner uh, living day by day and the main character in this is uh oh, sh I think she's like 17 she's a uh, escaped from an orphanage uh years prior and she's um a thief basically um and on the side she makes um little dolls and puppets um and she has some criminal contacts um and at some point just prior to the story starting uh these two little sentient puppets which are you know about that big um make themselves known to her and she forms kind of an uneasy um alliance with them they help her steal things uh, she keeps them safe and makes on the side of her other business um she makes bodies for them which they imbue with consciousness and thus increase their ranks basically and as the story unfolds you get to learn more about uh, who these characters are and um, this looks like some sort of digital art or something, but uh, yeah, who did this? It just says Red Nose Studio, um, but it's fairly accurate. That is what the two main puppets uh, look like. They were super fun characters. One's made of wood and one's um, steel or something, but uh, they were fun. Like this was really cool. And uh, before he wrote this, he wrote some short story, which was released at a con or something, and it's basically a prequel to this kind of thing, um, which at one time was available online for free, but I don't think it is anymore, so. Um, I'd like to track that down and read it somehow, somewhere. Uh, but it was fun. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, some intrigue, and uh, the main character and these two characters um, kind of uncover a plot, and... It was fun. I would read more uh, in this in this world. I love, like Adrian Tchaikovsky, as I've said before, can write anything. Then I uh, I read Xenogenesis, Tales of Space and Time by Miriam Allen DeFord, short story collection, which um, when I first bought this, I made a community post and again mentioned it in a video, how awesome the cover art is and how it sounded like it was gonna be great. Uh, it wasn't so great. They're kind of like feminist stories from the 50s and 60s, um, but they just weren't all that interesting. Um, the majority of them, almost all of them, if not, maybe all of them actually, um, kind of have something to do with reproduction, different ways of reproducting, different societies and their forms of reproduction. Um, only a couple of these stories stuck out, and now it's been like a month since I read it, so I can't remember one. There was a really good time travel story so the only story I, uh, I really, really quite enjoyed was um, called The Children from 1952, published in Startling Stories, December 1952. Uh, and it was this scientist who had lost his wife and child in some sort of accident and came up with not exactly a time travel experiment, but a way of confirming if uh, future generations... Um, unlocked the ability to time travel and uh, kind of ends up meeting two of his own children from the future from vastly different points of uh, human history, which was really cool. Uh, there was another one that involved um, deep time. Actually, you know what? I think I was thinking, I'm thinking of the same story. Yeah, so the children was the, uh, the one I really enjoyed. And there was a couple others, but I, it's been a couple weeks now and I forget, but all in all, it was basically a three out of five for the collection. Um, they were interesting, but um, not the literary masterpieces uh, I was kind of hoping they would be. 
Um, after that, I read The Best of Hal Clement, um, which I'm not really going to talk about because I believe uh, Richard at Vintage SF and Ira at um, SF Words of Wonder, the three of us are going to do some sort of collaborative video discussion on this. Uh, then I um, took a suggestion of Richard's at Vintage SF um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month. Um, he was talking about James Smith again. Smiths, and um, I don't think it was in that video. I think it was a previous one he read, The Demon Breed. God, my memory's terrible. Either way, um, I was put onto James Smith's by um, Richard's videos, and I only had, at the time, The Witches of Cares and The Demon Breed. I decided to read The Demon Breed um, because it's linked to his uh, The Hub or The... Um, Oh, what's it called? Not the Federation, but he's got a huge, um, it turns out, future history. A lot of his short stories and a couple of his novels all take place um, in the hub, which uh, really interested me because I love future histories. I like science fiction where a bunch of stories take place in the same universe. Um, so The Demon Breed was my introduction to the hub. And, um, well, Richard's done a much better job of uh, explaining it, but the world building was awesome on this water world where the islands are basically like giant interconnected vines and stuff. There's there's trees and landscape up top, but really it's just interconnected vines and things floating around. Um, there's a scientist, kind of solitary scientist on one of these islands doing some work and uh, inadvertently gets captured by um, an invading alien force who they're just going to hide out on these islands and kind of... Um, dig themselves in to prepare for an invasion on um, human space. And I think they're doing this on more than one world. They're they're kind of um, hiding themselves in the, the less populated areas of a few of these water worlds because they are from water worlds themselves. They want to take a few of these planets from humanity. And they're trying to learn about humanity through uh, the scientists they capture. And the scientist catches on that um, these aliens, which had failed to conquer humanity like 70 years in the past, um, they're so stubborn with their views of themselves being um, at the peak of their evolution that they couldn't possibly have failed uh, that previous invasion without something they were missing. And they form this whole hypothesis that there's actually um, a breed of humanity who's incredibly competent and skilled and um, basically a super soldier kind of thing. Um, they just postulate this out of nowhere, um, and the scientist catches on to this, and he just feeds into that fear. He's like, oh yeah, that's that's completely real. In fact, I know one of those agents, um, and she's heading this way, because he happens to know uh, the main character of the book um, is one of his former students, and she checks up on him and delivers stuff to him every few um, months, maybe once a month or something. So she's on her way, and he's basically hidden some information. Uh, should she come across it, that, hey, I've, I've sort of set you up. Um, as this mythical figure, um, and between the two of us, we can probably trick um, this invasion, um, or this, you know, this advance force into uh, basically pulling out and abandoning this idea. And it's a whole battle of wits, basically. Like, can these two um, trick the leaders of this uh, potential invasion into thinking, like, okay, we were right, there is a factor among humanity that um, we missed, and... We're not going to be able to win this war. Let's back out now, kind of thing. Uh, and it was really cool. The female character, uh, James Smith, is known for his um, female characters, which I've come to learn because I didn't know much about James Smith until I started reading and until I started watching um, Richard's videos. But you got a great female character. She's not a super soldier. She's just an intelligent scientist um, with some skills and some intelligent otters. The intelligent otters were uh, pretty cool. And there was a line... There was a line somewhere that I bookmarked because I thought it was pretty neat. Okay, here's the line. Um, the planet, by the way, is called Nandy Klein. But um, this is just the main character um, reflecting on the origin of these intelligent otters. But she says, uh, or rather the narrative says, uh, attempts, had been made to attempts had been made to trace the original consignment of laboratory-grown cubs to its source. But the trails soon became hopelessly lost in the giant intricacies of hub commerce, and no laboratory was found which would take responsibility for the development of talking otter mutations. The cubs which had reached Nandy Klein seemed to be the only members of the strain in existence. 
For all practical purposes, then, this was a new species, and evidently it was less than 50 years old. I just thought that was neat. Um, I don't know if they pop up in other stories. Um, probably not. It would be cool if some of the short stories end up taking place on uh, Nandy Klein again. Anyways, I really liked that. Um, and I immediately jumped into um, a, the Telsey Amberden stories, which is probably uh, James Smith's best known character. Also female. This one much younger. She's, I think she, at the start, she's 15 or 14. Um, uh, this is 80% stories about her, and I just finished the last one, and it ends with her turning 16. There's more of her in um, another collection. I ordered this and three others. They're all compiled by Eric Flint, um, published by Bain in the early, early 2000s. So I read Demon Breed. I realized I want to read more about the Hub stories. Um, and this was the first book to arrive. The other three... Um, I think they're going to take a week or two to arrive, which is unfortunate. When I get them, I'm probably going to jump into the one that involves his other well-known female character. I think her name's Trigger, but she teams up with an older Telsey, I believe. Um, and they end up as kind of, I think, agents for the hub or the Federation. Um, and it just sounds like it's going to be awesome. Yeah, the Federation. So Telsey Amberden, Amberden is um, just this young kid who through these, how many stories are they? Through a series of stories which were published in, uh, I think the 60s and 70s. Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six stories here that were published in the 50s and 60s. And they're kind of a progression of this girl learning she has uh, telepathic abilities, um, more so than the average telepath in the hub universe. And it's kind of her origin story expanded across all these stories. Um, if I were James Smith, I would have been too impatient. Like, it took him years to just slowly build up this character's kind of origin story, really, uh, through these stories, which is really cool. I can see why they were combined into, uh, they were worked a little bit into uh, fix-up novels. Um, I don't have any of the fix-up novels, but I have all the stories now uh, between this and the, the other three that are coming. Um, these were really cool, especially the last one I just read last night called The Lion Game, which was worked together with, I think, Goblin Knight and Sleep No More, which are two other short stories, and published just as The Lion Game, uh, a novel. The Lion Game was a really good short story uh, involving this character getting trapped on a planet um, where the society basically uses portals to get back and forth, kind of like um, Larry Niven's No One's Space. Uh, what are those things called? Oh, uh, I can't remember. But anyways, they, they just travel through portals instead of doors. And she gets sucked into this um, kind of off-the-charts series of portals where she's stuck in all these windowless, doorless environments. Um, and it's actually uh, kind of a secret penetration from a different uh, strain of telepathic humanity that's kind of dug in on this planet. Much like in this book, they're kind of hiding uh, amongst humanity on this planet, but um, Telsey was sent there kind of as an agent of the, the psychology department, which works uh, on telepathic um, matters. Basically finding rogue telepaths or anything that has to do with telepathy that could be a danger to uh, the galactic society. Um, and she's very reluctant to join this whole uh, society, which is literally worked through all the stories, her reluctance to be, to have anything to do with this uh, organization, and basically ends up with her working for them eventually. Uh, really cool, really great um, story development, but the characters she meets in this hidden um, circuit of portals is really cool. Uh, I just kept thinking this would make a great short movie or a uh, graphic novel, some of these characters. Um, I was hoping to find fan art and stuff of some of them, but um, I failed in that. There didn't seem to be any for those characters, but it did bring up a picture of an analog magazine I have, which made me realize that the second... Uh, yeah, the second um, tells you story, and I'm sure the first was too, but I have the second here in analog in these big issues that they did for about a year and a half uh, in the 60s. This is May 64, and this is... Um, 
part one of two of the second Tells the Amberton story. And it's so cool to have this. Um, that is a dog that features in the story. And I believe there is another illustration of it. Yeah, just this massive illustration here. And then the second half of that um, was in the June 64 issue, which I also have here. And there's also some giant awesome artwork for that. So that's cool. I've totally become a, a James Smith fan. Uh, like I said, I have three more of his books coming. I have another one here in this group of new books. Um, I'm not quite finished this. There's two stories left. Um, Telsey doesn't feature in them, but they're kind of related to her. So that will finish uh, the early Telsey stuff. I know she reappears with the Trigger, the other character. One of those books coming is, I think, specifically Trigger stories. And then the other one is Trigger and Her, Telsey. And uh, the other collection, I'm sure I'll put pictures up. Uh, I think it's just Hub, Dangerous Territory, which is more Hub stories. So... Loving this stuff. Looking forward to more. And that is what I've read recently and what I'm currently reading. Uh, new stuff. I, I managed to find this the other day. Um, this is more James Smith short stories. Uh, I think Vega, I think there's multiple stories involving uh, whatever the Vega stuff is. I haven't looked too deeply into this because I'm going to stick with the Hub Federation stuff for a while. But... Nice to find that used for a couple dollars instead of having to buy it uh, new. Uh, the Connoisseur's Science Fiction. This is from Penguin. Found this yesterday at a local bookstore where I was donating some books. Um, first published in 64, but this is a reprint from 76. I'm just trying to find the uh, contents here. We've got uh, Alfred Bester, Frederick Pohl, Kurt Vonnegut, Theodore Sturgeon, Jack Finney, J.J. Ballard, Asimov, Eric Frank Russell, J.T. McIntosh, and Frederick Brown. Um, Unbroken Spine, too. Like, I never read these random collections, but I couldn't pass this up. And some wild, wild cover art, too. Um, another collection, What Might Have Been, Alternate Empires, edited by Gregory Benford and Martin H. Greenberg. Um, I picked this up because I like ancient history. Uh, and it could be interesting. I don't know um, what cultures are written about, but we got stories in here from Frederick Pohl, Niven, Malzberg, Paul Anderson, Kim Stanley Robinson, James P. Hogan, Benford. Silverberg. No idea when I'll get to that, but it just too interesting to pass up. Uh, I got TJ Bass, uh, The God Whale. I did not realize that um, uh, the first book in this series, Half Past Human, it was there. Uh, I was looking at it, but I didn't realize they're connected. This is the second in that series. Half Past Human is the first. And I didn't grab Half Past Human, so I'll have to go back for it. The two of these stories sound absolutely insane but um they have decent ratings i've heard people talk about them fondly so um it's just if you read the synopsis on uh, wikipedia for these they sound outrageous but i'm very much looking forward to them i got a barry b long ear elephant song uh this purchase inspired by ira at sf words of wonder he's been talking about this series um circus planet or circus world uh was the book uh, he first read, and then uh, this is connected to it. So I still need to find Circus World and the other one, which is uh, City of Baraboo, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I want to find those and read them. And then another one from here, Manifest Destiny. This is short stories. Uh, and it sounds like my kind of stuff, space opera. I have, unless I've read a short story in a collection, I don't think I've read any Barry B. Longyear. I got Utopia by Sir Thomas More, written in the 1500s. 
Um, I don't know much about it. I know it, it, it's kind of considered a, an early science fiction. I think it's more philosophical work. Uh, Utopia can be viewed as a philosophical romance, traveler's tale, treatise on political economy, a monument of European humanism, even as the first science fiction story. I've read about it here and there. Uh, it just sounds like something interesting to check out sometime. Uh, here's a cool one. I at first I thought this might be a first suggestion, uh, first edition. It's the Seeds of Time by John Wyndham. It's actually a seventh printing, so uh, not a big deal. It's it's really nice. It's ex library, so it is marked up, but otherwise um, it's in good shape. Uh, I have not read any John Wyndham, and I have a lot of his books. Um, a few months ago, I got most. A, just a ton of his books for one dollar. It was one of my better scores. Okay, I have a book sent to me by the author David J. Salisbury. This is Mock Reach. Um, this is his newest book. But first, I gotta mention, he sent me his first book um, a while back in his Oris Project series. This is the second one, Renegades. I read the first one. I reviewed it. I read this months and months ago. But along with several other books, I completely forgot to make a video. <laughs> I don't know what the other books were now. I'd have to, I, I don't even think I rated them on Goodreads. It was just a weird month and I, I totally dropped the ball. So those books are lost to time. But his second book, I did read it. <laughs> the first one uh, involves, it's like this human, um, probably the origin of, the true origin of humanity in this world um, exists billions of years in our past and they're, they're working on the Oris Project, which is this giant space station kind of thing where they're going to try and outlast um, the collapse of the universe. But they also send people out to other planets to collect human-like species or other humans. And they also seed planets and um, wait billions of years for those to develop into humanity. And then they recruit people from those cultures and bring them back kind of to enrich the overall stock of uh, the Oris Project. Um, and kind of just get as much different types of humanity as possible toward the end of the universe. And this is going to be a multi-book series. I did read this, but God, it's been so long now. I enjoyed it about as much as the first one. The main character from the first one pops up, but he's not in it as much. Um, and the first one took place almost entirely off, um, I was going to say off-world, off, off the Oris um, structure, really. It took place on Earth, mostly. This one has... Um, more detail on the actual Oris project and Renegades kind of refers to like a faction of that project, kind of disagreeing with the overall um, project and its directions. So I really enjoyed this at the time, but my memory's awful. I can't remember a whole lot. Um, if I ever read the third, I'm going to have to go back and uh, reread, but it's fun. And when David sent me his newest book, I realized, holy shit, I never talked about this. So <laughs> apologies, David. And here's his newest book, uh, Mock Reach, which I'm not actually entirely sure uh, what genre this is. I'm, I'm not thinking this is going to be um, much like his previous two books. Uh, the, uh, the synopsis sounds much different. Uh, so it's, if you were alone in a room, if the sounds all around you deepened and slowed, the light dimmed and color lost its richness, if the second hand on the clock across the room took two seconds to tick, then five, if you couldn't move, couldn't breathe, could do nothing but observe as the time got slower, lights got darker, sounds got deeper, were you dying, were you losing your grip on reality, if you heard a voice, and it ends there. Um, not at all like the synopsis is from his previous two books, this one's totally shrouded in mystery, so I'm quite curious. Uh, and when I get to it, I will not forget to talk about it um, immediately. <laughs> so again, thank you, David. And we'll move on to just this last batch. All of this came from a thrift store. Um, and I tried to stop myself, but I, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I usually find nothing from this thrift store, but somebody obviously offloaded a whole bunch of their books. Um, and I know they came from the same place because they all have marker on the front. Somebody previously selling these just wrote prices in black marker on all of them. So I have some A.E. Van Votes here. I've got Masters of Time. 
by Manor Books. 1975, a Manor book. Great artwork. Uh, the House That Stood Still. This from Pocket Science Fiction. I've read very little A.E. Van Vogt, just a handful of short stories. That was from 1980. Uh, we got a Daw book here, The Man with a Thousand Names. This probably has an illustration in the front. Yeah. I love that about uh, Daw books. Uh, the War Against the Roll, which I almost think I might have that. Um, one of those Timescape copies. I like uh, I like this whole livery. Uh, the Players of Null A also might have this in storage. I don't think I have any of his books on my shelves. And one more, uh, Future Glitter, his newest and greatest novel. That one is an ace from 1973. Yeah, I hadn't heard about that one, and um, I've not really read the synopsis for any of these. Uh, Survival Ship and Other Stories by Judith Merrill. Uh, I haven't read anything by her, but I'm happy to have found this. This collection is from 73. Um... I think this is a short story, but now I'm not so, so sure because uh, they're listed as chapters. I thought it was short story collections, or collection. I don't know, I didn't do my homework despite these sitting on my shelf for uh, a couple weeks now waiting to be talked about. Uh, Philip Jose Farmer, Lord Tiger. I think I've hauled this before and decided not to keep it, but um, this one's in good shape, so I kept it, or picked it up rather. Uh, a few more here. Verna Vinci's uh, Tachia Grimm's World. Uh, this is a reworked version of, I think it was just called Grimm's World. I have it. Uh, it was his first book, uh, but this has been reworked. I guess you could call it a fix-up novel. It must be of some sort. Um, part one appeared slightly different form in uh, Analog 86. Part two appeared in a different form um, in an anthology by Damon Knight. And part two and three appeared in a different form. Oh, as Grimm's World, the book I do have. So yeah, this is a expanded version of Grimm's World, his first uh, published novel, I believe. I think it's someone uh, technologically advanced who ends up on a backwards kind of world, I think. Got some Gordon R. Dixon here. So better known stuff, Dorsai. The only Dixon I've read, aside from short stories here and there, was uh, Naked to the Stars, which was also a Da book, uh, and I absolutely hated it. Thought it was terrible. Uh, that was years ago. Don't remember anything about it. I just know I, I really did not care for it. Space Paw, probably the greatest uh, science fiction cover art ever, ever created. Uh, and I have uh, a few Delaney's here. Samuel R. Delaney, Empire Star. I might have this in a different form, but uh, this cover art is excellent. I'll be keeping that one. Uh, Never Yonya? Never Yanya? Never heard this one talked about. It's a big one. Um, some sort of fantasy, maybe science fantasy. Uh, I've read a couple things from Delaney. I've read Dahlgren. I couldn't think of it. Dahlgren, which, uh, you know, you either really like it or hate it. Um, I liked it, but I was completely lost, which I think is the case for a lot of people. And is this a short story collection? Probably. Uh, Drift Glass. Uh, again. Cool cover, ruined by some marker, but uh, um, somebody obviously offloaded a big collection and I, I scooped them all up. Anyway, that is uh, what I've read and what I've recently acquired. 
some sort of video should be coming out. I think it would be on Richard's channel uh, where we're going to talk about uh, the best of Hal Clement, which I'm uh, a little scared about because, because it's been, an, it'll be a couple weeks since I've read it. By the time we talk about it, I'll probably forget everything. But uh, I'm also excited to uh, get together with those two guys and talk some science fiction. So until then, or uh, my next video, uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.